I know everybody's been waiting for this moment. Why is a weathered 70-year-old tractor on display here, the place where the first homesteaders settled decades before tractors existed? Let's rewind the story of a fascinating journey covering 4,000 miles and 150 years of history. In 1974, a Vietnam vet from California filed a claim on 80 acres of Alaska wilderness, built a log cabin, and became the last person to take advantage of the Homestead Act of 1862. In a lot of ways, Ken Deerdorf, the last homesteader, was like the first, Daniel Freeman. 30s-ish men moving to faraway places looking for a new start. Freeman, a Civil War vet, came from Illinois to Nebraska. He filed his homestead claim on New Year's Day, 1863, and built a small log cabin west of Beatrice. Freeman had hand tools to work his 160 acres. So did Deerdorf, but he also had a used tractor. A 1945 Aulis Chalmers Model C. It gave him fits at times. When uh, Ken would be on this tractor pulling stumps, at times the, the tractor would rear up so that his, his back may have even been uh, uh, like close to being uh, parallel with the ground. When Deerdorf moved away in 1984, the tractor stayed behind, sinking into the mud for decades, until the Homestead National Monument launched a rescue effort funded by retired Beatrice doctor C.T. Frericks. A rather difficult rescue effort. Man, stop. Hey, there we go. Oh, there we go. Helicopter to a ship, then a truck, all the way to a shed behind the University of Nebraska Lincoln's Larson Tractor Museum for a few weeks of work by the university's Tractor Restoration Club. We're going to clean it up some. We're going to try and stabilize it. Part of conservation work, you try and slow any future deterioration. Right now, I'm just kind of vacuuming to get kind of all the debris and the dirt that's been built up on this tractor and uh, trying to get all the rust that's kind of breaking off onto the exhaust manifold and stuff. This had a tree growing through right there. Oh, yeah. And we found this an hour before the helicopter got here. So it was a scramble to get the tree cut and carry it down the bank. And as you can see, he has an assortment um, file to a punch to uh, sockets. It's crazy that, that this is pretty much like all he had out in Alaska to, to do all that he did. This mud has been like airlifted. I have never been airlifted on a helicopter. This mud has had more experiences than I have. We'll do a little bit of prevention, some rust maintenance on it, and see what we can do with the seat, if we can get it slowed down a little bit in the deterioration. What I'm doing is I'm taking off all the moss that has grown on this wood. Right now, I am just trying to clean off like the black mold and wiping down like the dirt and stuff that's on there. We don't want to restore it to an as-new appearance. We want it to look as closely as it possibly could as to when Ken actually used it. When school started, you know, club met, and they looked at this thing, and they go, you went where? <laughs> <laughs> so the students who helped get Ken Deerdorf's old tractor ready for this day got a history lesson. And the Homestead National Monument got what they're calling America's most famous tractor. Restored to its middle age Alaskan glory, Ken Deerdorf's tractor now has a home in Nebraska, forever connecting the first and last homesteaders. To have this treasure, this tractor, um, at Homestead National Monument of America kind of represents a bookend. The tractor being in kind of the rough condition that it's in tells that story of him being out there by himself it's gone through a lot, this old tractor. A little battered, but not beaten. Not unlike Daniel Freeman, Ken Deerdorf, and the other homesteaders who often endured a lot in return for free land and the new lives that came with it. <laughs>